Hello everyone and welcome to another Star Wars Old Republic video. For this video, I will be counting down some of the nicest helmets in the game. Now for those of you who don't who know me, you know that usually I don't wear very expensive armor sets. My Sith Warrior main is literally dressed up in non-cartel market gear and I think some of the nicest armor designs in the game are not the ones that sell for millions upon millions of credits on the GTN and some of them as I've mentioned before aren't even associated with the cartel market. Now in this video I will not be focusing on helmets that are widely considered some of the nicest helmets in the game like Tulak Horde, Unrelenting Terror which is one of the newer ones or like Temple Guardian. Rather, I will be looking at some of the more neglected and often underestimated helmets that actually look amazing and in my opinion are some of the nicest designs in the game so far. A lot of these helmets actually sell for like under 500k on the GTN and some of them won't even cost you credits. So I will not be including all of the really rare and expensive helmets that you might think I would include because I don't think a list of those helmets would even be useful for you guys considering the vast majority of players won't even be able to access them due to their rarity. In any case, let's get started and who knows, by the end of this video, you might just have found a new and affordable way of customizing your character. So firstly, let's start with my all-time favorite helmet. Uh, this, is the one that, this is the one that I'm wearing on my Sith uh, main and it's called the Campaign War Leader's Headgear. Now this one is from using classic tokens way, way back many years ago and it was PvE gear, so it was non-cartel market. In my opinion, it is easily one of the nicest Sith designs for a helmet and it somewhat resembles the armor worn by other Siths like Darth Kraid from Star Wars Legends. Uh, this exact model is no longer available, but you can get a similar model by turning in military equipment crates to the Odessan uh, vendors at the Warbase. So each crate has a chance of dropping this helmet. You can earn these crates by doing heroics, but keep in mind that you will want to be earning the military equipment crates. Now for those of you who will be hunting for this helmet, uh, may the RNG gods be with, with you because really it's quite a low drop but when you get it, it's definitely worth it. One of the primary reasons I love this helmet is not the design but actually the voice modulation. It makes your voice sound slightly robotic and it's great for role playing during the story. She was blinded by a mother's hope. Now Arkham's on the loose without anyone to calm his rage. This helmet itself works really well with some of the other cybernetic armor I have on my Sith, such as my robotic leg, because I like to pretend my Sith was wounded in a battle and had to be reconstructed similar to Darth Vader, and as a result, any lasting humanity has like been wiped out. So it's always fun to have a background to your character when you're playing through the story, and especially uh, very intimate storylines like Knights of the Fallen Empire, Knights of the Eternal Throne, where you have to make a lot of choices. It's really nice to make a background. And so all of the way by which I kind of fashion my Sith warrior is based upon his background and the way by which I kind of want to make choices in the story. But nonetheless, let's move on to the second helmet, which is one of the more expensive ones. This is the Tactical Infantry Helmet. Now this thing sells for a hefty 3 million credits on the GTN at the time that I'm making this video. And what's even more interesting is that it's actually a bronze armor piece and it's very rare to see bronze armor pieces sell this high. Uh, it's quite a high price, but it, that should be a testament to how awesome the helmet is. From the outset, it looks like it's just a very nice clone helmet. There are many reskin versions of these in the game already. However, when you unsheath your weapon, it activates a really cool tactical HUD that looks awesome on a commando. Now you will see this trend with some of the other armors that I show you. Uh, there are some armor sets that actually have a visual effect associated with them and I absolutely love these things. Usually the effect is associated with both the helmet and the upper body armor. If you are a commando, I definitely recommend getting this helmet. It also goes really well with the galactic command tuning which has a very similar graphic effect. Now there is a similar effect that happens when you have the upper body armor equipped as well, where when you unsheath your weapon, a full tactical HUD appears all over your body. I think this is really, really cool, but the reason I'm using the stalwart leader upper body armor, which doesn't have any visual effect and is what you see on the screen right now, is because I don't like the big bulky box that is on the back of the tactical infantry upper body armor. I really think it ruins the entire look. It looks really awkward when you have a big commando blaster rifle on your back as well. But nonetheless, the helmet itself looks absolutely amazing and I definitely recommend it. Coming in at number 3, we have the Relentless Hunter Helmet. 
Now, as you guys can see, it doesn't sell for much on the GTN, despite being a gold armor piece. Now, understandably, the design of the helmet itself is not really amazing. I actually think it looks pretty ugly. However, once again, when you unsheath your weapon, a visual effect is activated from the helmet, which is actually a moving laser. Now, I think this works perfectly with a sniper, which is why I'm using the helmet on my sniper, but it can also work well on a bounty hunter and maybe even a commando. Given its low price on the GTN and the awesome look of the laser, I think this is one of the nicer helmets to have on your characters. However, as I said earlier, the design of the helmet itself probably deters a lot of people from actually buying it. This is why I was thinking it would be an awesome idea for Bioware to add this laser effect to other helmets we already have in game, particularly a Mandalorian helmet. Uh, we have some really nice Mandalorian helmet designs in the game already, and I think it would be a great idea for Bioware to reskin one of those helmets, but with this laser effect on it. I mean, I would definitely use that on my bounty hunter, and I think it would be very popular among the community as well, but just an idea. Now, coming in at number four, we have the Energized Triumvirate helmet. Once again, it is a bronze armor piece, and so understandably, it doesn't sell for much on the GTN. However, similar to other helmets, this one has a visual effect when you unsheath your weapon. However, the visual effect is associated with both the helmet and the upper body armor. It's basically a lightning weapon tuning, but for your armor. And when you unsheath your weapon, your armor starts giving off these blue sparks, which makes it almost seem as though your armor is either damaged or overcharged, however you want to see it. Nonetheless, I think it is really, really nice. I will show you what it looks like on just the upper body armor and then just the helmet as well. It still looks nice when used individually, but the full effect comes from having both the helmet and the upper body armor equipped. As you guys can probably tell, I'm a total sucker for these visual effects. Uh, a lot of these armor sets that have these visual animations actually came from the Explorer packs, and a lot of them were bronze as well. So this is why I often term the Explorer packs as the golden age of hypercrates, because this was the time in which actual effort was being put into all of the items. Uh, the gold, silver, and bronze stuff all looked really nice, and it was all very desirable. Nowadays, it seems as though Bioware puts almost no effort into their bronze and silver items, and with very few exceptions, but the packs themselves are invariably filled with tons of crap that no one will ever really want, and then there'll be like usually one platinum item, and maybe one or two gold items that people would actually uh, get the pack for. Alright, enough of that rant. Finally, coming in at number 5, we have one of my favorites, which is the Dynamic Brawler Helmet, which isn't a helmet at all, rather it's a little circlet that comes up on your forehead. Once again, the reason this helmet makes the list is firstly, it is bronze and so very affordable on the GTN, as you guys can see, and secondly, when you unsheath your weapon, your eyes actually glow white. This is, in my opinion, one of the nicest visual effects because once again, it's great for role playing either with other players or when playing the story because you could pretend as though, uh, when, you know, when you get angry or something, your eyes glow white showing that you're ready to attack. So it's kind of similar to what happens in TV shows when some supernatural creature, uh, whether it be like a werewolf or a vampire or something, uh, or some animal, and when it gets angry or it's about to attack, it's often shown with like its eyes glowing red or something. So you can imagine your character as similar to that, and when he's able to attack, his eyes glow bright white. So it's a funny way to think about it, but honestly, I find that the story is always more fun when you actually characterize your tune and give him a story like that. And one of the reasons I also like this helmet is because it's non-intrusive, it doesn't cover your head. So it's basically the same as using the hide head slot toggle, and it also works really, really well with the hood. So that is my top 5 list of helmets in the game. Uh, the vast majority of them, as I've mentioned before, are affordable and easily obtainable. And as you've probably noticed, I love the whole visual effect thing uh, when you activate your weapon and stuff. And to be quite frank, it took me a long time to even realize that these kinds of things were in the game, which is one of the reasons I really wanted to make this video, because I think a lot of you might not know that there are these awesome helmets in the game, and they often get underestimated or overshadowed by some of the really expensive and rare stuff, and people don't know that there's these really cool things selling for very, very cheap on the GTN that you could use to customize your characters. And by where if you are listening, please make a Mando helmet. Oh, please make a Mandalorian helmet with this red laser effect. Uh, you don't even know how many credits I would give to have one of those. Also, I do hope Bioware starts making more of these visual effect armors. I know some people aren't a fan of them, but honestly, they are better than the bronze crap that we have been getting from the recent cartel packs. So it would be quite nice to see a return to these armor sets where actual effort was being put into the bronze stuff. Nowadays, the bronze stuff is all just crap, and, and I just destroy half the stuff I get because I don't even think if I gave it away, people would want it. And with that, the video is over. I do hope you guys enjoyed, and I will see you in the next one.